um, first of all, thank you everyone for joining us for this Sigma members meeting today. We really appreciate your time. Um, before we get started, of course, we'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the lands of which we're meeting all across Queensland today and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging and also extend those respects to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander members who might be joining us today. Um, so thank you everyone for making some time today to dial into this meeting. We really appreciate that uh, your time is very precious and very limited. We will try to keep this to half an hour. Um, and of course, we will also be recording this session um, for your colleagues who may not be able to make it today and we'll distribute that to members. Um, so just a little bit of housekeeping before we get started. Um, I should have introduced myself earlier. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Dee Spink and I'm the Acting Assistant Secretary for Together. I also have my colleague Billy Collis on the line and Billy is the Acting Lead who is working directly with our members in Sigma. Hopefully you've come across both of us um, in your travels as well, but just for those of you who we may not have met previously. Um, so thank you again for joining us again. We will try to keep this to half an hour. Um, we'll record this. If you do have any questions, if we can encourage you to use the Q&A function rather than the chat function, just because it sometimes gets a bit fast paced in the chat function, then we'd probably have a better shot of answering those questions through the Q&A function. But if we don't get around to those, uh, we'll obviously give you our contact details and we'll try to follow up with you after the session. So appreciate your patience around that too. So of course, the reason that we are here today is to talk about um, some more recent developments in the department, particularly in relation to mandatory vaccination and some risk assessments that the department has done around that, that are currently out for feedback um, to both staff and unions. So before we get stuck into the details around that, we thought it would be um, worthwhile revisiting the journey that we've been on so far in relation to these COVID-19 matters. Um, so many of you will recall back in, I think we started in November, but certainly during December, we've been talking to members about this matter for quite some time now. Um, obviously, timing is not ideal over that Christmas and January break, and now there are a lot of other complications that we didn't have um, when we started this conversation either. But we thought it was worthwhile just revisiting what members' thoughts were at the end of 2021. So broadly speaking, when we put the question to our members in SIGMA about mandatory vaccination, the majority of members did support vaccination being mandatory in your department. However, we also know that vaccine mandates are not the be all and end all when it comes to making your workplace as safe as possible from COVID-19. And that's why a majority of our members also indicated that they supported regular consultation meetings with together delegates and management, a campaign for respectful workplaces and mental health support in regards to COVID-19. Um, we'll talk a little bit about some of the aspects of what we're calling the Safer Together campaign as well across the public service a little bit later too. And members also supported a consistent approach to COVID-19 related matters, um, matters sorry, across the public service agencies which we are certainly starting to see at the moment when it comes to mandatory vaccination policies. So just a very quick recap, because we know a lot of people were probably on leave when some of these conversations were happening late last year as well, and to really set the scene as to how we got here essentially. So in, um, I think it was, potentially something like the 8th of December, the Chief Health Officer issued a direction regarding high-risk settings. So particularly pertinent to SIGMA, um, this direction captured youth detention centres, schools, airports. There was a separate direction that captured hospitals, and there are some other sites that have been um, designated high-risk settings for the purposes of mandatory vaccination. So. There were certainly some, um, some work sites and some workers that were very clearly defined in this CHO direction, particularly our members in youth detention centres. So a separate process was undertaken in regards to compliance around that CHO direction for those members. And we are supporting um, a few members through those processes at the moment as well. Um, separate to that in, um, sorry, not, I mean, related to that, but there are um, some additional requirements that sort of fall out of the CHO direction 
that we're referring to as ripple um, mandates from CHO directions where these employees may not work directly in a youth detention centre or a school, for instance, but it is a requirement of their job that they are able to visit those work sites. So we've had a number of really um, robust discussions with the department about uh, their analysis of who that CHO direction would apply to outside of these detention centres, essentially. So I'm sure, you know, we have members online who have been part of some of those direct discussions as well. So we very much pushed the department to ensure that that implementation was as narrow as it possibly could be, because we were um, certainly a little bit concerned about potential overreach in terms of our members' rights and entitlements when it came to the, the application of the show direction. Um, while there have been a number of um, discussions with the department about that, or, you know, in, in regards to making sure that it is the narrowest possible interpretation of that show direction, there have been some roles within the department that have been caught up in this show direction. So we are supporting some members through through those processes at this point. Um, we do have our industrial officers supporting any of our members who might be affected by that show direction at this point in time. Um, I think it's also worthwhile noting as well when we're talking about those disciplinary processes, and certainly this is not um, uh, not specific to the Department of Children and Youth Justice and Multicultural Affairs, as you're probably well aware. Um, most, if not all, I think departments at this at this point have a level of mandatory vaccination policy either after consultation or being implemented at the moment. Um, one of the key aspects I think worth calling out in terms of the work that we are doing to protect members' rights and entitlements um, in this process is challenging the notion of suspension without pay and its application in this matter. So those cases are still being progressed through the Industrial Relations Commission, but it is certainly something that um, we are taking very seriously in trying to safeguard members' rights around that and the rights to um, a fair and transparent process around that. Um, a more recent uh, occurrence as well, of course, last week, Novavax was approved by the TGA, or sorry, I think it was approved yesterday by the TGA, but certainly um, we understand that Novavax will be available uh, next month for people to access that vaccine. Um, I know we've certainly had a number of discussions with members in this department and in other departments where they've indicated that they are willing to be vaccinated, but with a, a vaccine like Novavax. Um, so in light of the fact that we now have essentially a date for people to um, work towards in regards to accessing Novavax, we have written to departments to ask them to enable people to access Novavax if that's something that they have indicated is, you know, the, the difference for them in terms of getting vaccinated. So. We haven't heard back from government in relation to that as yet, but that is certainly something that is on the table for us. And of course, the most recent um, uh, action that has happened in this process is that your employer has come forward with some risk assessments around a range of workplaces in the department. And that's what we're here to talk to you about today, really. Um, so I'm going to hand over to my colleague, Billy, because Billy's done some analysis um, and worked through the feedback from members about those risk assessments. So I will hand over to Billy. Thank you, comrade. Thanks, Dee. Um, and thanks, everyone. Uh, I wanted to start by prefacing that we had a, a great engagement with our, our feedback through to our members and from members in the department. Um, we've been able to break those up into four key areas for everyone. So the first one is that we saw a small number of staff who share their views that are opposed to any vaccine mandate. Um, what we did start to see is, a, a, you know, a number of members sharing their stories around um, exactly, you know, being immunocompromised and wanting to feel safe in their workplace as well. So we're seeing the two kind of sides there, one where people are kind of against the vaccine, the other one where people are saying, hey, there's a real and, and you know, um, imminent risk to me and my safety, and we want to know what the department's doing about that. The other aspect of that is that we saw some feedback that the risk assessment's missing the opportunity to consider other employment controls. And what we're talking about here is particularly, you know, um, is going to be a tough one for you and your colleagues and, and our community when it comes to COVID. And the toughest is going to be around our psychosocial health. Um, 
we know that we're going to see people who are unwell. Um, we know that ourselves might be unwell. And we also know that our clients and, and your clients might be unwell. So that's going to have impact on us more than what it has for the past two years. We want to see what the department's doing more so uh, in regards to the risks on um, the health effects of you and your colleagues. And the last thing that we started to see was a bit of a trend from the feedback that said that the business continuity plans and risk assessments need to consider more um, controls on the impacts of your workload um, and, you know, pr providing some more controls around how um, they're going to support your workload if they increase because people are always sick um, and um, COVID's caused factors outside of their control. So there's a bit of a risk there that we saw a theme on as well. So that's the overall view of the feedback. And when we look down a bit deeper, we're seeing some changes and some conversations happening around the local risks through the feedback. So we got three key themes from um, the local risks. We're looking at things like um, members reporting that meeting rooms don't provide barriers or protections for them, such as glass or plastic screens between the staff and clients. Um, and that locally, you know, more needs to be done to mitigate the risk to staff. The other aspect on that is people were sharing their stories around what it's like transporting, putting um, clients in cars and not being effectively mitigated in the risk in that space, particularly hearing some stories through the feedback around long distance travel um, and being in a confined closed space for a period of time. And we saw a lot of feedback coming from our administration members, um, particularly in um, service centres who were saying that um, signs and messages as controls aren't, the, you know, aren't just simply working when you put them up, um, that we need to make sure that there is training and audits and other measures in place to ensure that those practices have their effect. And if they're not having their effect, enabling the local managers to, to make changes as required. See you next slide when you're ready. <laughs> awesome. And so when we're talking about the psychosocial support, there are a couple of aspects around the psychosocial support, as I mentioned before. What we started to see was clear themes around work expectations. Um, and this is around ensuring that workloads are realistic and acknowledging that the COVID circumstances with people being off work, potentially with the virus or quarantining over the next 12 months will have um, an impact on you and your colleagues. And so the department's risk assessments have, have been silent on that and they haven't really touched on that. So we need to raise what, what they're looking at in that space. Um, we wanted to make sure that the department's looking at fatigue management for a lot of our colleagues who are working from home, um, making sure that there is fatigue management in place um, to ensure that you're well and you're safe and that there's regular check-ins in that space. And the final key aspect of this is looking at ensuring the department it provides some digital mental health services which can be accessed by staff that are outside of the EAP program or the Employee Assistance Program. Um, I think the department needs to put some measures in place to ensure that your psychosocial health in the next 12 months is really supported. And it was good to see some trends coming through on that through the feedback. Next slide, I think. So looking at all of that, um, we have a bit of an understanding around what's next when it comes to the risk assessments and where the department's going. So obviously we've got the feedback which we've come through. You've seen a bit of the key trends for that feedback. We'll be sharing that with um, the, through the delegates, through to, to management, um, and we'll report back on the outcomes of that. Mm -hmm. The next aspect we're, we're expecting to see on the 3rd of February, the department will continue to make changes um, or update the risk assessment based off the feedback from stakeholders, staff, and, and your union. Um, we're suspected to see a decision around about the 3rd or the 4th of February around those risk assessments and um, the DG locking those in. From there, um, we're suspected to see a draft policy. So the department will then start consultation. We, we kind of understand that it's looking at about a two-week process at the current stage for consultation on the policy. So you've had the consultation at the moment around the risk assessment. Um, that closes in work the third. On the fourth, we suspect to see consultation for the policy, um, which will be looking around what the risk assessment said and whether or not the DG is going to potentially make some decisions around an employer mandate through the policy. So we've got a bit of time, um, but we've got two weeks to talk about the policy very soon. So when we get that through, um, we'll open some more feedback, we'll have some more conversations, and we'll, we'll see what the policy says. Um, the details are always the most important thing. I'm going to head back over to Dee now, I think, and she's going to talk you through what else we're, we're doing through Applicating um, Sector 1. So over to you, Dee. Thanks, Billy. Thanks for that. So 
um, certainly do, you know, remember to keep knowing your emails and, and other ways that we're contacting members um, in the next little while because this is not the last stage in this process either. So thank you, Billy, for that update. And thank you to all the members who provided feedback as well. That's been really helpful. Um, so, you know, do continue to take the opportunity to do that as well. Uh, so in addition to what's happening in SIGMA um, as a department, um, there's also a range of other matters that union members are advocating for. So uh, two that we wanted to particularly um, pick out today uh, in relation to, and I know we've had some questions about this as well, uh, in relation to rapid antigen tests, which we also think is something that's missing from the risk assessments. And then also the um, pandemic leave directive that we are advocating for some changes for. Uh, so first of all, in relation to rapid antigen tests, so the Australian Council of Trade Unions, which is the peak union body of the country, um, is currently running a petition to, um, to, to seek that rapid antigen tests are provided free and are made accessible to anyone who needs them. And we know that particularly when we're looking at the industrial side of that, there are a number of employers who are seeking that staff provide a negative rapid antigen test result before they come back to the work site. There are a number of different circumstances where it appears that rapid antigen tests are being required. Um, so there is the ACTU petition, which we will um, we will promulgate as well for our members to sign. In addition to that, when we're talking about the pandemic leave directive as well, we are also seeking for some specific uh, commitments from the state government around provision of rapid antigen tests to public sector workers. Um, in addition to that, we are also seeking that in recognition of the fact that it has been two years since the introduction of the pandemic leave directive, that some workers may have run out of that special pandemic leave um, allotment. And we are also seeing certainly with Omicron that there are some instances where people might have to have essentially rolling um, isolation if there are members of their family who are getting sick at different times. Um, we may also see people who are reinfected um, with Omicron or with, a, with another strain as well. So we believe that there are certainly some gaps in that that we haven't um, that we haven't been able to, or sorry, that, that haven't been reflective of where we are now in January 2022 versus I believe it was March 2020 when the pandemic leave directive was initially um, published for public sector workers. So we'll uh, give you the links to both of those campaigns and we really encourage people to get um, in touch and you know, be, be part of those programs. Um, Billy has also thrown up on the screen um, a poll for those of you who are online to vote in today. Um, so please do, you know, if you've got a second, be able to participate in that poll um, in regards to rapid antigen tests and pandemic leave and just you know, more broadly having some new activity in your workplace as well. So that we're coming up to um, almost half an hour. So that was essentially what we wanted to cover off today for our members. So thank you again so much for joining us today. We really appreciate that. So please do keep an eye on your emails and your text messages. We'll be communicating over the next couple of weeks about how this matter is progressing. Um, if we haven't been able to answer any of your questions today, please do get in touch with us. We'll do some follow-up as well through the back end of um, Zoom, but hopefully you have all of our contact details. Um, don't hesitate to contact us on your.union at together.org.au or give us a call on 1-800-177-244. Um, and we, you know, we should acknowledge, of course, as well, that this can be um, a very difficult topic for a lot of people and it is something that we need to ensure that we're having respectful and kind discussions with our co-workers about because it is something that a lot of people feel very passionately about and we're here to you know, support those conversations happening in a respectful way in your workplaces. So if you have any questions or if there's anything that you just want to discuss, if you just want to you know, use us as a sounding board, please do get in touch um, with myself or Billy or your regional organisers and we can talk through whatever your concerns are because we know this is, um, you know, it's, it's certainly not something that we've really had to deal with previously. So there's no such thing as a silly question or 
you know, anything that you should be concerned about raising with us. So we, once again, really appreciate everyone's time. Um, I hope you're staying safe out there as well and you and your families and your clients as well. And please don't hesitate to get in touch if there's anything that, that we can discuss. So thank you again and take care and we'll be in touch soon. Thanks everyone.